Welcome to another episode of VKind Connects. I'm your host, Shabnam Islam. And on today's edition, we have Alex Langhel, professional athlete, fitness model, bodybuilder, and personal trainer, most notably known for ma- being Master Chef Romania's first ever vegan contestant who definitely brought some heat into the kitchen this last season. So Alex, it is a pleasure to have you on the show. Hello, Shabnam. Thank you for having me. It's a very big pleasure for me to share my story. And uh, what can I say? Thank you so much for, uh, you know, paying attention in this and investing all the, the energy. Well, you are someone who is absolutely newsworthy today in plant-based, in the plant-based sphere. And so let's talk about it. How did you actually arrive on MasterChef Romania as a personal trainer? What led you to the show? Um, I think it was like a gift for me, for all my work I've been doing uh, in fitness and late in cooking, also because of veganism. Uh, I was recommended, I can say, some... uh, some of my friends, yes, they are calling me and say like, what do you think if you're going to be in MasterChef? And I say, yes, why not? So the second day, the guys from MasterChef, from the production, they called me uh, to ask me if I want to take part uh, of the preselection. Uh, I told them in the beginning, but you know I'm vegan. <laughs> and they were like, oh, uh, give me a second, please. I call you back in half hour to ask the production. This is how it's happening, honestly. And... Uh, Half hour later, they were like, so what are you going to do when you're going to, you know, have to taste the food or something? And they were not even thinking that I'm not going to cook. So me, I say like, okay, so let's see what's going to happen. Because I, I didn't want to cut this uh, rope, you know, to going. So I say, let's see what's going to happen. And uh, yes, someone recommends me. And uh, the fact is that they... Uh, Master Chef called me on the 9th of September, which 9 is my fate number. And uh, in that day also, because one of my friends told me like, look, this is your birthday. I say, why? Because it's in August. No, no, but it's 9 of 9th, you know, it's September. I say, okay, so uh, I have to accept this challenge and uh, this is how I get there. And, and being on MasterChef was a challenge. And so can you tell us a little bit about that experience of what happened on the show? Uh, I wasn't scared, I can say, but uh, I was, um, you know, a bit excited and I had a lot of, uh, you know, emotion about because um, you're going in a show where, uh, you know, you have to fight with uh, many other good chefs and uh, chefs who have a very wide range of, uh, you know, products and ingredients to cook there. Because again, to be honest, uh, in the MasterChef, uh, you know, shop there, like, uh, was a very small amount of uh, vegan ingredients. Mm, I couldn't mm -hmm. ask too much things. So I knew it's a challenge, but in the same time, uh, for me, I was so happy inside seeing that I passed the preselection and after I passed the first round and after I passed the second round without cooking uh, any animal products, being vegan, the chefs were like, not much to say because, you know, it's, it's you brought many the talent. people know how to cook meat, you know, like it's easy. Everyone, you take it and cook meat. But the real challenge is to take a vegan product and showing in the front of the chefs and compete with all other guys who are cooking with me. Absolutely. So Absolutely. I was very excited, very emotional, if I can say for me. And um, yes, I was thinking all the time, when is going to be the moment? Because, you know, I knew in the end it's going to be one moment when I have to decide what I want. And... Uh, was a very tough experience, honestly. Because there also, is... because I'm not, I'm not very, you know, very experienced in cooking. Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. cooking was part of my life once with be- becoming uh, vegan. So I just, you know, did my best. I did a lot of research before looking at, uh, you know, Netflix shows of cooking or stuff. And I say, okay, let's go there. Lift the box. <laughs> was crazy. And so they actually on the show were requiring you to prepare a piece of beef. Is that correct? Uh, yes, that was the elimination round. 
where I get there uh, because we had a couple uh, like a team competition and we were tighted back in back mm -hmm. and you have to cook five minutes, the other guy five minutes. And my colleague, he was not very good friend with me. He was thinking that, you know, vegan with muscles, looking good, you know, having the words talking is like, how did this guy is going forward? And he was honestly looking to to make something to go to the challenge round. So I felt it in a way, but I told to him, I said, look, uh, no judgment, but you did a very good thing <laughs> because it looks like this is my, my moment to prove that I am a real vegan. So I get there, we had uh, invited a chef from a friend, sorry, I forget his name, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> he was cooking beef, so he's not like, <laughs> and <laughs> yes, yeah, so was, was well, very strange there, honestly, because um, you have someone invited, you have eight other competitors on the challenge round, and you have three chefs, someone in the front of you speaking French, is starting to cook, and uh, uh, you know the the butter first, and after he started the meat, and they knew in a way because on the backstage I told them a couple of times, they say, look, because you have the small mic, you know, even if it's no one around you, they still can hear you, mm -hmm. and I said. I hope for for the sake of what you're doing here to don't be meat on this uh, challenge. And I get there and it was. So I say, look, I'm sorry, but but this is like a precedent because on the episode before I had sausages. So two sausages and in the end they added pork. One you should be pork. And I say, two sausages are two sausages. Why should be one pork? Because the other guys, they're going to cook what they know. Yes. Let me do my thing. And uh, even if I knew in a way the rule, I started to cook two vegan uh, sausages. I was looking around there to look for uh, um, rice. Uh, I forget in English the name. You know how you do the sushi is the transparent one from rice to roll the sausages to yes. look like a sausage, you know. And... Uh, I look around, I couldn't find it. And after I found the, the green from the, the green stuff from the sushi. The seaweed? The, the sushi. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> because it was like, I didn't have much stuff to do. You there, made and I seaweed blow sausages. The <laughs> everyone, everyone there, believe me, was creepy but funny in a way. Because at the sausages, they everyone was blowing the intestines on That's the show disgusting. there. Because you have. And I told them, I said, look, I'm not going to do this. I said, yeah, I know I grow in a village. I grow up with animals. I grow them. But this is the last thing what I'm going to do in a TV show at the MasterChef being vegan. I said, this is not possible. But I start to cook them. One chef uh, came to me and said, what are you doing here, Alex? And I say, oh, I do some vegan one. It's Asiatic. And he was like, oh, I like your idea. The second one is the guy who is cooking a lot of meat on the TV shows and everywhere. And uh, he came and say like, oh, good, Alex, you start to cooking. But he he didn't know that it's just vegan sausages. Mm -hmm. there. And I let them think like that. And I say, yes, chef, I'm doing it because I'm here and I have to. And the third one, with 15 minutes before to finish the time, he came, he was like, but where is the pork one? And I say, Sorry, chef, does, does, doesn't work. It's not going to be. No. Oh, but yes, but you have to, to keep the rule. And I say, no worry. If this is the rule, I'm going to leave them here and I go to the elimination round. So in the elimination round, I came back again. So I was just going like this. But uh, this one, I couldn't uh, manage it. So I just uh, try to stay strong to don't, you know, it's a very small line there between uh, being um, kind and talking and uh, take it with being aggressive yes big guy you know muscles they were they were thinking like to be honest i was not even eating too much there in the show at uh, the catering was very difficult with the vegan food <laughs> so uh, it was that that hulk you know like hulk like this and i was like hungry the whole day shooting <laughs> and the masters came to me i was like you have to cook meat. Say like, no, sorry, this is not going to happen. I'm not here to do, but do it for us. And I say, no, doing for you, not me. 
So I'm doing it here because I do it passion. That's why you asked me to come in this competition as a master chef because I am big, I am vegan. So that's why you want me here, not to come here vegan and to live like, you know, no. It's not Life possible. with no integrity. And that's the thing about being yes. vegan. You finally connect the dots and your values match. They match your actions. And for, for from the global vegan community, I would not, I would like to say thank you because um, we know how hard that is. And um, I, how did you feel bad? Did you feel bad that you had to walk away or were you proud of yourself? No, I'm very proud of myself. I've been proud in that moment. I've been thinking it's the right thing and I'm not going to pass. I say, look, this is my this is my journey here. This is my mission. I cannot uh, mess up with this. Once back in time, a couple of years, I say, you know, praying and thinking like, why am I here? What's my mission here? So when I when I saw this step, I say, look, me, Master Chef is vegan. It's 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 have to be real, you know. And I had many people who say like, ah, oh, but you should cook. But you know, it was think about other eighteen guys around me saying like, this guy is crazy. He just because he don't want to cook meat, he's not not going forward. He's just leaving the show because they had to kick out another one in that day. Oh. Because me, I just left it. I say, look, you didn't judge me, nothing. I just leave it and I go home. Mm -hmm. Good for you. I mean, we're we're all so impressed. We're all so impressed with your action. Thank you so much. And you said that you uh, to go back in the interview. You actually said that you grew up on a farm raising animals and and uh, in Romania, I presume. Um, yes. So yes. how how did you shift into this plant based lifestyle? And how long well, ago? It's a it's a it's a long story, and I can say it's a journey because you know. Being here and refusing to do stuff for, you know, just cooking meat for fame is mean I had a big journey behind and a lot of uh, work in uh, competing, winning this cup, you know, because it's a lot of work and uh, it's, it's like this. Uh, in 2015, I was 30 that, uh, that time, my age, uh, I was thinking to go for Romanian nationals at the bodybuilding classic. It was my first competition as an omnivore. So I win the nationals in a month uh, pre prep or something. And I didn't feel like competition is for me in that stage of eating a lot of meat and all that, you know. Anyway, coming from a village where I grow with animals, for me was normal, but normal because you grew up like this. And in the same time, being in a village, you need to eat because you don't have a market you know you have to grow the animals to do it like because i'm 37 so this is what's happening when i was 14 growing you know with rabbits with with uh, chickens but you, you grow with them there it's not like you're killing animals and no you take care of them and you help each other agriculture so, is different um it's a yes. it's a symbiotic relationship um, and it is yes. not the way we do animal agriculture globally anymore. But even with that kind of lifestyle, you found you found a cognitive dissonance. Something's not connecting right with my values. Yes, this is this is the thing because uh, end of 2015, 2016, I start a bit from a friend with a kind of yoga meditations, mm -hmm. and I start a bit to see the things a bit more clear. I was like, why? I should eat that much, you know, meat, because you start to see behind and uh, you understand that uh, weight, uh, also energy is also, you know, that why we have to, I don't even see that animal is like, it's growing somewhere, it's not all that vibe and energy and easy, my body just, I didn't, wasn't like a purpose for me. I just start to feel it like, look, I, it's not something is uh, wrong, and uh, this is not how it's have to be. Mm -hmm. And I just follow my instincts. And in the summer of 2016, I moved to Ibiza. I just been on holidays, and I say I want to move there, honestly. <laughs> and in that summer, I made the change, and I took out uh, the meat that all from I. I didn't feel like I wanted anymore. And in the same time, fish, because for me, fish is also meat. I don't, uh, you know, like. 
I hear people, I don't eat meat, but I eat fish. And I ask them, so fish, what is it? It's flesh. Uh, flesh is meat. And uh, uh, Yes, I mean, like, he's smarter than you, the fish. Mm -hmm. As long as he knows where to travel, how to travel in the water, I say, look, he's smarter than you, even an octopus, even many other animals who have a very high energy and uh, conscience, you know, because this is all about. You cannot just take all the memories and everything from, from animal, you know, how it's growing and everything, put it in you and think that you're going to be all right. Right. It's not happening like this. So end of 2016, I, I moved to UK uh, in London. And as long as I've been in London from that time, I don't eat meat anymore. Anyway, I hear uh, lots of people talking there that, uh, you know, the thing. The taste is very bad. It's uh, not. Uh, it's very plastic and all this. I say, but what do you expect? <laughs> and that was for me a bit. You know, I say like, look, and I start to do research. And after I see documentaries, I start to feel good with me. And uh, in 2018, in the beginning, I also start doing competitions in UK. I've been working in Gym Box, a very big, uh, big gym there, and to you know to connect a bit with the fitness. So as long as I had this uh, change from being omnivore, taking out diaries and after and after taking out the eggs, I also been competing. So I start to feel much better in all the ways. I was, you know, more energetic. My face started to think, to change a bit, the skin, the quality of my sleep. And uh, I start to have, I don't know, much energy and people around me, they were feeling like, Bro, what's happening with you? Because uh, you are different. I, uh, you know, because I've been in UK and I come back after three years from London. They were like, bro, you're going to come up from there very bad. <laughs> I say, no, 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 because uh, I, I, I focus on what I want to do. So after being vegetarian, I did, I think, more than 12 competitions in two years in UK. Mm -hmm. At the age of 32, 33, so even vegetarian and vegan, uh, this is uh, the trophy from one of the biggest competition I did, like two, I took the second place, but it was an international one, IFBB uh, Federation, two bros. And until that, I had, uh, I have pro card in Miami pro competition, which is uh, UK Federation, pure elite also. And... I finish even the competitions. I feel amazing. Now I have three years of being vegan. That all. And so, so and so, most see, of your placements, most of your awards, most of you placing in the top five came from when yes. you were a vegan athlete, correct? Yes. And yes. so, vegetarian and vegan mostly. And so, when you started shifting more to this plant-based lifestyle, and I, from personal experience as being a fitness competitor. Um, that sphere is inundated with toxic masculinity. People only think that they can get big by eating lots of meat, right? So how, how was your training and recovery as a vegan compared to what it felt like as a meat eater, as an omnivore? Um, when I was omnivore, I can say I need rest after I was eating. Uh, and also, I wasn't, you know, like doing any excess because being doing fitness, uh, knowing about nutrition, I was still eating well, but nothing, nothing the same like being uh, vegan. And uh, uh, some of the time in the year, I was doing also intermittent fasting. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, best performance I had. The, I was getting shredded much faster. I was not thinking that much of the food I'm eating because, you know, meat with diary is not going well. Meat with uh, high glycemic carbs is not going well. Meat with fat is not going well. So I see it's like, why well, should eat meat? <laughs> let's take this one on the, on the side and let's be smart and continue. So one of my best shapes was like this uh, vegan. And now I can say I'm on uh, my best shape. Recovery is much better and to um, give you a bit the logic uh, behind how I see it as an athlete. Uh, the fact that uh, the food is digesting fast because vegetables are digesting fast then because you also don't eat high in uh, fibers. Because when you want to lose fat and get in shape, 
you do high fibers in the rest you eat a lot of carbs so carbs with fat it's going well because it's vegetables carbs with or any kind of proteins because you have to mix them it's not just one source like meat you choose right. meat and something around no you you eat them uh, well so the fact that your body to recover needs more potassium uh-huh. to do the exchange with the insulin in your body so most of the meat and all the processed foods they have a lot of sodium yes and the potassium is going well your heart rate is going up you start to have a lot of problems a lot of disease why because you don't keeping the balance of your electrolytes in the body so all the veggies they have much more potassium than the sodium so recovery it's much much faster and you can sleep better uh, your body don't stay to digest uh, a long time and uh, you can eat even massive amounts of food also <laughs> because this is all about no so it's i can say that at my age now i'm feeling the best uh, uh, shape uh, uh, strength uh, you know endurance uh, the way i thinking it's different my energy is different and uh, are people around me who are saying this not uh, not just me so what does a typical day of meal prep look for you look like for you i mean you know in traditional uh, bodybuilding it's chicken brown rice and broccoli but sad <laughs> yeah, it's sad. So That's what, is sad. It, what does I it know. look like for you? Uh, when I'm off season, I'm not thinking that much of uh, the meals to do like a prep. I'm uh, more flexible. And this is how I teach also my clients and the people who need advice from me. I say, look, if you want to be healthy and to look good and to be, you know, doing fitness, you don't have to stick to something very straight because you're going to get bored. Yes. So why don't you try to eat more fruits because they have sugar in sugar to recover and why to, you know, when it's, it's much, much better, much easier. So now I'm very flexible. I have my porridge in the morning. I always change it. I add the uh, chia seeds. I add the uh, uh, hemp seeds. I add dates. Uh, banana, I can always change it with some flavors. So it's kind of the same food, very healthy, very full of uh, nutrients, but in the same time, it's always different taste and uh, you're not getting different bored. spices, you can do it sweet. different vegetables. Yes, I mean, you, ha- you have a very yes. colorful plate all the time and, and we're eating often. And I think that's the important thing to remember is that you variety and particularly in a vegan diet will always give you yes. sources of protein, will always give you some sources of good, healthy carbohydrates and healthy fats, but eating them in different types and varying quantities can be really beneficial to the system. And uh, so when you are dealing with people in, in your field there that are in bodybuilding competitions, what are some key strategies you could give people that are very meat and dairy intensive in, in, in that profession? How could you get, how do you get them to adopt a more plant-based lifestyle? First of all, I show them my abs. <laughs> I say, I say, look at my abs. Look, I can say I can do vacuum, and I say, I don't know. How do you feel with your digestion? <laughs> this is how I started the guys in the gym, you know, because uh, I know I've been there. I know what's happening, and uh, I have friends who they are big guys, lifting weights you know, eating a lot. And they ask me like, bro, how are you doing it? Because we are always tired. We, we cannot, we, because this is the, the sport. Oh, this is the industry. Fitness, mm-hmm. it's about eating a lot. And they know also the others. The others, they know, but they don't have someone to look at because they think it's not possible. Right. So it's, it's something for them what they don't, don't understand. Honestly, it's something what was make them think and uh, hard to believe. And they still looking at all the, you know, advertising and all the materials on uh, YouTube and everywhere when they say proteins, proteins, proteins. And I take them and I say, look, bro, you, you think it's about proteins. <laughs> Listen to me. I say, when you want to bulk, bulk, get bigger, what you do, you add in carbs. When you want to get shredded, what you do? You're cutting the carbs. So 
why you should eat that much protein. Absolutely. You're just tired. And look, after a high protein diet, what you have to do? A detox. <laughs> so why we need to put our body in such a, a hard work just after to start to, to do something to recover because we feel very bad and tired and uh, you can see on your face, on your skin, start to have red points mm -hmm. and because this is from the liver and uh, so I try to, to be an example to show them that it's possible and the second about the bodybuilding and fitness, uh, I was looking to find uh, the answer for them. Uh, creating this massive vegan uh, supplements brand also because the industry until now it was in a stage where they were not delivered the, the best supplements because what's in the beginning and of, uh, also the other industry the way one it's much bigger so say like why we should do all this when they already eating this is like why we have to change people because you have to educate them so i say look I'm coming with uh, gym, fitness training. I'm coming with the food. I teach you how to eat and how to cook uh, good and uh, with the good macros and nutrients. And the third one, I say, you need supplements to don't bloat you. You need uh, supplements to, to give you, to keep you fresh and have a mix of uh, nutrients. Like my supplements, the proteins have also Omega have uh, ashwagandha and another plant, which is very good for your body to help you clean. So I say, look, you have this, I can teach you this, I can teach you this. So it's just about you. You want it or you don't want it. But the power of the example is making them believe that it's more possible. And once with the age, because, you know, in the beginning, it's always, yeah, but memory of the muscle and that and that and that. But it's not just the fact that you're vegan. Right. It's just that it's something from thousands of years ago here. I say, look, give up to your diet, give up to gym and let me see how you're going to look like after. That's and great. I say, not like me for sure. <laughs> so once with the age growing up and, uh, you know, I go 37 now, they just look at me and say, bro, if you can do this, it means it's start to be easy. And I have many guys in the gym who are using my vegan supplements now. They are happy and they start to understand they see me, I am big, I am strong, I did competitions, one of the only vegans in the competition where I compete in UK, and they were appreciating me a lot in the competition, but in the gym they were like, bro, you're going to lose muscle, it's going to happen this, you're not going to win any more competitions, and this is how I think traditional uh, bodybuilding is going to change, and also with the help of the community and all the documentaries they do now, the game changer, uh, what the health, uh, if you go even forward and uh, you go for the China experiment, you're going to find even China more study was brilliant. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. About the food and uh, we are, we are what we're eating. So we need to, to stay alive, right. to be fresh. We are what we send eat. This energy. And that's also why you created this supplement company called The Massive Vegan. And tell us a little bit about that uh i tell you a bit before about the story about the massive the name because it was like a nickname like people they know me about after this name and when i were in the uk in london and uh, people saw me that doing a vegan competition start to win competition they are like bro you're massive and vegan and i say look massive vegan mm -hmm, sounds very good for me let's <laughs> Let's do it as a, as a brand. And in the same time, uh, I try to build a concept because even cooking, it's part of the massive uh, veganization because I want to give them everything, not to say, yeah, but I don't know how to do this. No, it's not like this. I can teach you with this. I can help you with this. You want supplements? Yes, but it's good because we have a product, as you can see here uh, behind me. Nice. And uh, I came back in Romania in 2020 and it's starting the pandemic. I was like, look, I worked so much in London. After three years, I came back home. Many people ask me, why are you going home back in Romania after you did everything here? 
I say yes, but I think Romania needs me, and there it's gonna be a big impact if I am going back. Another man also because I, I I left Romania being an omnivore. I came back vegan with competitions with another uh, mentality. So they were like, bro, what what was going on with you there in Ibiza in that summer? What you did there? <laughs> and uh, I put a couple of friends together and I say, let's, uh, let's give to, to, to the people something what's good for their health. This is also making me, you know, give me a lot and all the energy I have to keep doing what I'm doing because I know I give them health and the happiness and uh, I teach them how to have a better lifestyle. Uh, with everything around us, with not creating any harm to anyone, because we can do this. I mean, it's it's, it's obviously because this is the this is the future, and we have to to go in that way. So I said, let's do massive vegan and Master Chef. I've been laughing of them. I say, look, one second. <laughs> I say, me, I start the massive vegan, and you at Master Chef. You call me to come here. You see the M. I say it's gonna be there. <laughs> That's Nothing right. From... Yes, yes, it was uh, was very funny. And so, are these supplements available worldwide, or is it just local to Romania for now? At the moment, uh, uh, we're doing it local because we want to create some uh, good materials for advertising. If you if you watch my Instagram, you're not gonna see anything about supplements there. Because I, I don't want to, I, I want to, to make people understand that it's something good for them, what's inside. And after the second thing to be, because it's me, the one who use them, but we want to create some nice materials. At the moment, we are starting in uh, Romania and uh, we're looking uh, to go uh, uh, all over the Europe. Now I have a lot of uh, fans and uh, supporters in, uh, in uh, Brazil also. This... This master chef was just like taking me like this and say, Alex, go, That's go great. and spread the veganism in the world. So soon we're looking forward to go because the we manufacture them in Belgium. So it's the best quality as a protein is the uh, the only one now hydrolyzed the the best quality as a protein. It's mixed, have a lot of nutrients, but we we want to to you know teach people create a lifestyle not just selling supplements yes so we're gonna build also with the cooking because now i have a kitchen studio i put it together to start uh, shooting there uh have also guests you know uh, people who are passionate passionate about cooking vegans we're doing a bit podcast talking about how did they get there you know, where was the change and at the same time to cook and to, uh, to teach people the value of that food. Just because you cooking it, it's much better for you. Because all the passion and love you put there when you cook, you're doing it home, you are with your family, you eat something else. Even, even if it's not that good, you're still going to like it because you're going to be like, it's made by me. So we're looking to educate people in this uh, direction and uh, we're going to come worldwide. But when we're going to be ready to show them that, uh, you know, you have everything you want. You just need to make that click and say, yeah, let's do it. So you're saying now that after you're done with Master Chef Romania, you have a vegan cooking show in the works. And yes. is it possible that there's a vegan meal prep company coming along? Um, meal prep, we, uh, we have um, one of my associates. Uh, uh, he's having a business uh, with meal prep. But the thing is that he's also doing with uh, meat meal prep. So I say, look, I, I wanted to, to, to connect in a way, but... We are not ready. He is not ready because we want everything, the package to be vegan, everything to be, you know, like when we promote something. And uh, we say, not me, me, I better stay in the kitchen, stay in the in the gym, uh, show to the people that's possible to do recipes and make collaborations. Uh, but that. to start us to do it, I say, look, let's let someone else to cook 
uh, you know, for everyone. We create here good recipes. We give it to you and we just do, we just uh, give a very good uh, food to people, a vegan one and also full of nutrients and uh, to tell them the story about the food. But behind it's a story about, you know, all the nutrients, why they are good for your health and everything. Uh, show that them, look, no one, uh, no one died before <laughs> for you to eat. It's just like, it's, it's life here. It's happiness. And I love that. And I think the biggest thing about your the, the theme of a vegan cooking show is showing people what's possible, um, that you can do this at home and you can create something delicious, nutritious, that can heal you from the inside out. And also you talk about collaborations, which I love that you're bringing communities of people together that want to continue to educate the world on what is possible. And, uh, you know, here at VKind, we're also uh, creating a vegan cooking show called Peeled. So maybe nice. there's a collaboration in the works there between you and them. So, but uh, it's gonna be amazing. It's gonna be amazing. Uh, I'm looking. I'm looking forward for um, to connect more people. How I say, it, even with my kitchen studio, to bring a lot of people. And in the same time, we say maybe in the future we're gonna have some uh, vegan big brands who want to invest. And why not to create a vegan master chef? That's and right. Just to put it on Netflix, like uh, any other uh, cooking shows, and invite uh, you know uh, exp um, people who cook for passion, but in the same time uh, who have already experience. Yes. And the vegan cooking show, it's suitable for everyone. Yes. That's the thing. You just have to go there and give a vegan food. Show them what you can do with some vegetables not uh, you know taking a piece of meat and cooking two times and after say yeah but this is not good so let's throw it yeah but this is not passion this is not cooking this is it's like you have a paint you you don't feel like you, if it's not good you want to do something there right. not just to throw it and uh, yes in the future we're looking forward for more collaborations and uh, why not to go worldwide and uh, Massive veganization, 2022. And that's it. Massive <laughs> vegan taking over the world. And Alex, thank yes, you. I thank you. So. Thank you so much for joining us today from halfway around the world. And that wraps up today's episode of VKind Connects with the massive vegan himself, Alex Lengo. To learn more about Alex and to stay up to date on his future plant-based initiatives, give him a follow at, on Instagram at massive.vegan. To watch this VKind Connects episode, and many more, subscribe to our VKind Vibes YouTube channel. And to stay connected with us and the greater vegan community, give us a follow on Instagram and download the VKind app today. In a world where cruelty is the main entree, VKind Studios is serving up a new kind of culinary challenge. In each episode of Peeled, contestants face off to be named hottest vegan chef or get peeled into the compost. Tune in summer of 2022 as we cook up compassion. This season, color is in and cruelty is out. No plants felt pain in the making of this video.